let me show you how we can use Lightroom to tuck the shadows and the lights of this scene, manipulate them and create a much more dramatic image out of this. As always, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. We are going to start with the basic raw adjustments. So right away in the basic panel, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the overall contrast, which in turn means I do have more control over the contrast myself. And then within the basic adjustments, I want to work on the base exposure. Taking a look at the histogram, you can see it's quite well exposed already, but we do have a little bit of clipping in the darkest areas indicated by this little arrow right here. Hovering over it, you can see uh, the clipping is happening in the very near foreground in areas which are not that important. Still, I want to try to fix that a bit. I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm also going to bring down the highlights all the way down, which will reveal more details in the sky. At the same time, let me further bring up the blacks for more details in the shadows. Due to these adjustments, we are losing more and more contrast, but that's not a big deal. We just want to set up the base image to have as much details as possible, which we can then later target with masking to bring back contrast in areas where we need contrast. And we still have a little bit of room to play around with in the highlights. So what I'm going to do to right away bring back some contrast is to increase the whites. After adjusting the exposure, what I'm going to do next is to adjust the white balance because at this point we have a better idea what the image looks like. So adjusting the white balance just becomes a lot easier here. I'm going to bring up the temperature because I want this shot to be a little bit warmer. So just a little bit like this should be fine. Also, I am going to bring up the texture, which will make the image look sharper. I'm also going to bring up the clarity a bit. To add some kind of subtle autumn glow effect, I'm going to use negative dehaze like this. Wonderful. The colors are a little bit too desaturated. So what I'm going to do is to bring up the vibrance, boosting the colors quite a bit. And I think we could also bring up the saturation slider itself. All right, so that is looking pretty good. And here we have the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see the shadows of the image got a lot more brighter and the white balance helped creating a warmer look for this scene. But of course, as I said earlier, the contrast is still lacking. We're going to change that by manipulating lights and shadows of the image. And we're going to do that with masking because we want to target specific areas of this image. So let's open up the masking panel. I guess the first thing that we could do is to work on the sky. I want to make the blue parts of the sky darker. Let's use a color range mask right here. And with that color range mask, we're going to click in this gap between the clouds to target the blue tones of the sky. As you can see, this will target way more than we need. So we need to modify that selection. Click on that mask, then click on those three dots. We want to intersect mask with and choose select sky. So only the blue tones we have selected within the sky will be our mask, as you can see right now. What I want to do with these is I want to make them darker. And as we make the blue tones darker, this will give us a lot more contrast. All right, the sky instantly looks much better. Let's continue. I also want to make these mountain peaks stand out a little more. I think I'm going to use another color range mask for that. And let's click right in here. This mask is selecting a bit too much as well. So I'm going to bring down the refine slider a little bit, but of course it's still too much. So how can we target these mountain peaks? I'm going to start by subtracting a sky mask first, getting rid of the sky this way. Then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I want to take out pretty much the bottom part right here. Everything beneath the fog shouldn't be selected. I'm also going to subtract the linear gradient coming in from the left side, from the right side. So we really only have these mountain peaks selected. I'm going to give them more punch by introducing a lot more contrast. All right, we could also try making them darker by bringing down the blacks like this. Because we have adjusted the contrast, you can see these mountain peaks start to 
become a little bit too bluish. So I want to counter that by bringing up the temperature, introducing some more warmth to them. At the same time, I really don't want the color to be that intense in these mountain peaks, so I'm going to bring down the saturation. Okay, that's looking much better. Let me deactivate this mask real quick to see the difference from before to after. Much better already, but we're going to further improve this. We're going to be stacking multiple different masks on top of each other. That's the reason to not go too crazy with one single mask. Now let me work on the foreground real quick. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm kind of trying to target the hills that get hit by the light right here in the foreground. I want to also increase the contrast in this area. So let's bring it up. I want to further increase the contrast by bringing up the highlights. And I'm going to drop the shadows. Here we need to be really, really careful to not introduce any clipping in the darkest areas. But a little bit of that should be fine. I'm also going to increase the whites. Okay. My goal for the foreground is to emphasize the highlights hitting those ridges while the shadows kind of stay rather dark. So adding contrast right here through this linear gradient really helps with that goal. What I also want to do is I want to kind of add a separating layer between the mountain peaks in the distance and the foreground with the help of this cloud which is hovering over here. I want to make this effect a little bit stronger. I'm going to use a radial gradient for that and I'm simply covering this patch of fog or cloud or whatever like this. And I want to make it stronger. So I'm going to bring up the blacks, which will reduce the contrast and, and just makes the cloud appear to be a little thicker. So let's bring it up like this. I do think this linear gradient might be a little bit too big. So I'm going to scale it down very slightly. I'm also going to increase the clarity, which will give us some more structure within this cloud. And let's also bring down the dehaze. All right, that's looking much, much better. We can see the light is coming in from the upper right side. That means the left side lies in the shadows and I want to further improve on that. For the next mess, I'm going to start with a linear gradient covering pretty much all of the left side. Now I want to introduce deeper shadows in the landscape. This means I'm going to subject a sky selection to not affect the sky. Then I also really don't want to affect these hills in the near foreground. These are a little bit harder to clean up. I'm going to subtract using an object mask. Here it's important to activate the rectangle select mode in order to precisely target these hills. With the rectangle select mode, I can just draw a rectangle around these mountain ridges in the foreground and let's hope Lightroom will detect them. That's looking pretty good actually. Let's subtract another object mask and try to target and this part right here. All right, that was perfect. We still have a bit selected in the foreground. So I'm simply going to subtract with the brush and I'm going to get rid of this part. Nice, so we have a perfect mask for the shadows on the left. Now, what are we going to do to make them deeper? We are simply going to bring down the exposure. We can also bring up the contrast a bit. And what I wanna do as well is to bring up the clarity to give it some more structure. Okay, this is looking awesome. Then I think I wanna further work on these mountain peaks. So let me create another color range mask, selecting these peaks like this. Again, I'm subtracting a sky selection to get rid of the sky. Then I can click on those two dots, go to intersect mask with and choose a radial gradient with which I'm going to draw a radial gradient over these mountain peaks. And just like that, we get a nice selection. In here, let me slightly bring up the exposure, kind of adding some more highlights. I'm also going to increase the highlights themselves. And let's raise texture to make these mountain peaks look sharper and some clarity. All right, now that we have made the left side darker, we can also make the right side brighter introducing some light effect coming in from that right side. I'm using a radial gradient for that. Let's make it nice and big. And of course I want to tilt it to fit the lights direction. And I'm also going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image like this. 
This will just help to create a more natural effect. Now what I'm going to do to create this light effect is to bring up the exposure. And as we bring up the exposure, it's really important to look at the histogram because again, we don't want to introduce any clipping. I'm also going to bring up the blacks. Let's bring them up all the way. This will not introduce clipping since we're only targeting the darker areas. You can see the mountains right here become a little bit too bluish. So I want to fix that by bringing up the temperature. And let's bring down the saturation a bit. And I think I'm also going to add some negative dehaze, making this light effect stronger. All right, wonderful. Then let me add another linear gradient for the top left like this. I want to further make the sky pop in this particular area. Therefore, let's also click on those three dots to intersect the mask with the sky selection to not affect the mountain peaks. And I'm going to bring up the contrast in here. And let's also bring up the clarity, which will make the clouds look just a bit nicer. Okay, now we're pretty much done. The only thing left are those highlights in the foreground. These need to be a little more prominent. So I'm going to use a color range mask and let's click right in here in the brightest part. You see, this will give us a really, really nice selection. I'm going to tone it down a bit with the refine slider. So really only the highlights are selected and let's bring up the exposure, making these brighter. All right, that looks nice. The color is a little bit off. I want to make them a bit more warmer, a bit more intense. So I'm going to bring up the temperature. This is looking really, really good. Now let me turn off all the masks so you can see the difference from before with our base image to after. Where we have targeted specific areas very precisely to improve lights and shadows. And this way we made this whole shot look a lot more dramatic. Of course, you can continue with a little bit of color grading. So let's head out of the masking panel and let's go into the color mixer. Let's work on the saturation for a moment. I want to bring up all these warmer tones. So let's raise yellow and let's raise green. And I do think I also want to raise the blue tones just to make the sky look a bit better as well. All right, nice. We can also head into the luminance tab to further work on the contrast between these colors. That means we could bring up the yellow luminance, which will make the highlights in the foreground even brighter. For the same effect, we can bring up the green luminance like this. And if you want to add more contrast to the sky, we can bring down the blue luminance. Perfect. Now let's also do some split toning through the color grading panel. Let's start with the highlights. And since we're working with a quite warm base image already, I want to emphasize that effect by using a warm color tone to the on the highlights. That means I'm going to set up the hue first to a very warm color tone, somewhere in the yellow range to kind of emulate golden hour light. And I'm going to bring up the saturation a bit. Kind of want to keep it subtle, so I'm not going too crazy with the saturation, but something like this looks pretty good. I'm also going to go into the midtones and do the same thing. Choose a golden hour tone for the hue and bring up the saturation a bit. We can work a little bit with color contrast by using the shadows and introducing a cold color tone just to balance things out a little more. And again, I'm using only tiny amounts of saturation to really not overdo it like this. And of course, finally, we can head down into the calibration tab, which is something I do for most of my images. I'm just bringing down the blue primary hue gently and bring up the saturation. Finally, let's sharpen this image in the details panel. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, hold down the Alt key while applying some masking so we can sharpen the important areas of the image and let's bring up the amount of sharpening. All right, and that's how we can manipulate light using Lightroom. So I hope I was able to explain this process in a understandable way. If this was helpful for you and you want to support this channel, I would be very happy if you would subscribe to it. Now I'm also going to clean up the shot in Photoshop and show you a few little extra tricks in there. So let's right click on the image, go to edit in and open as smart object in Photoshop. So first, Let's hit Ctrl J to duplicate this layer. Then we want to rasterize it. So right click on it and go to rasterize layer. Then 
I'm going to zoom in because there are a few sensor spots and I'm going to get rid of them using the spot healing brush. I'm also going to get rid of these bright clouds, which are kind of distracting. And then there's a part in the foreground which really, really bothers me. I'm going to use the lesser tool and I'm going to make a very rough selection around the rocks right here. And now I'm going to use Generate to Fill. So click on Generate to Fill and hit Generate to fill this area. All right, that is looking much better. Now let us merge everything into a new layer, hitting Control Shift Alt E. And now I want to show you a quick and dirty way to dodge and burn. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm choosing Levels. And I pretty much only want to select the foreground. So I'm going to use the gradient tool by hitting G. And you see the gradient going from black to transparent. I'm going to use it that way on the layer mask of this levels adjustment layer. And I'm pretty much deselecting everything except the foreground. Now let's go back to the levels adjustment layer. I want to make these highlights brighter. So I'm going to take the point for the highlights and simply drag it to the left. I can also add some more punch by using the midtones point and drag it a little bit to the right. Okay. Now, as I deactivate the levels adjustment layer, you can see it looks pretty nice, emphasizing the highlights of the foreground a little more. I'm going to use a black brush and just going to clean up with this levels adjustment layer. I don't really need it right here in the background. I just want to target very specific areas right here, like that. And we could also add a little bit more glow. I'm going to merge every everything again, hitting Control Shift Alt E. Then let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm going to increase the radius to around 50 pixels, which is something I always use for the autumn glow effect like this. Let's hit OK. But then we want to go to Edit, choose Fade Gaussian Blur. I'm going to change the mode to Lighten, then bring down the opacity to make the effect less visible. I'm going with something around 20%, I think, and let's hit OK. Now, this autumn glow effect is lying over the whole image, but I only want to target the highlights. So we can do that by right-clicking on the image, go to Blending Options. Here, we are going to use Blend If, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on the right side of this arrow, which will split them up. And as I hold down the Alt key, I'm also dragging it further to the right side. This way we are filtering out the darker areas of this autumn glow effect and so only the brighter highlights will be affected. Let's click OK and that is looking much, much better. At this point we are done editing this image. If you have any questions about the editing process or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments. And again, if you want to support this channel, I would be really, really happy if you would subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you all next time.